Okay, um, we're about to write or try to perfect our GUI for the ATM. This is the first GUI that we've done and up until now it's been quite simple but because because there are a lot of buttons here we've got to start to kind of nail it down controlled a little bit. So I want you to compare first of all, have a look at this idea. This is a procedural program, it's called a procedural program. Um, we wrote one of these at the very, very start. It was called uh, ATM Stage 1. Do you remember it? And Stage 1 was a program written in Eclipse where basically everything evolved around a loop. It's been round and round and round that loop. And the loop was while they haven't chosen to log off, we print the menu on the screen, we uh, input a number, and then depending on what that number is, for example, number 1 might be withdraw cash, um, Depending on what that number is, we do the things inside that case. Uh, and then we turn around and we return to the start and we print the menu again. Now, this works quite well because if they, for example, if they choose to withdraw cash, first of all, we can ask them, you know, how much do you want to withdraw? We can print on the screen how much do you want to withdraw. Um, we can, you know, input the amount. And then we can maybe check whether they have that much in their in their account. And if they have that much in their account, you know, then we can we can subtract that from the balance. And if they don't, we can print a message out on the screen. But we can put a quite a complex logic of, of, of sequential steps in there and different things to do and ifs and whatever else we need. Now, um, think for a second that each one of these, because these are the menu buttons um, on our ATM, so each one of these pieces of code that originally was in our case statement would be behind one of these buttons. You know, maybe the second one, which is printing a balance, that might be, you know, here, whatever. But each each one of our options is going to be triggered by pressing a button. And when you press a button, that's called an event. Now, whereas this is a procedural language or a procedural piece of code, it goes through everything in sequence. But imagine for a second users who press buttons at times when they're not supposed to. Say, for example, they press this button, which is withdraw cash, and it says, okay, so how much do you want to withdraw? Okay, uh, and a field appears there for them to type the amount in. Now you would expect them to, to use the number pad and type in, you know, I want to withdraw $100, whatever, and then hit enter, but they don't do that. Instead of using um, the number pad, what they decide to do is they decide to click on this menu button here, you know, which is, I don't know, print statement. So they got halfway down, halfway through this code, and suddenly they clicked on another button and they went to, you know, a completely different piece of code and they jumped backwards and forwards between these before one was completed. Um, now that's going to be a complete disaster and we've got to stop that from happening because up to some extent we've got to control um, that the user actually finishes off what they start. And the way that we're going to do that um, I'm just going to go back to back to the original here. The way we're going to do that is by defining what we would call states. Okay, come back to that in just a second. Now, um, <clears throat> there are going to be times when, for example, when they first type in the PIN number, where it's not appropriate to press these menu buttons. You just want them to use the number keypad and maybe enter clear and you know exit if they, don't, if they don't want then there are going to be other times when they have to choose a menu option from the screen and you don't want them pressing the number buttons um, so those are two different states at the minute one state in which these are okay but this isn't okay and another state in which this is all okay and this isn't okay um, now there's probably a third state as well, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So what we do is we, we generalize. If I want to call state number one, I want to call that, um, you know, numbers. That's when you're able to type in numbers, but you're not able to use menu buttons. Uh, state number two might be menu, when you can use the menu choices, but you don't, you know, necessarily, you're not allowed to use the number buttons, because that would confuse it. So imagine we're going down here. Um, what we do here is uh, if, if they choose withdraw, first of all, at the minute, it's it's in menu state. The ATM is in menu state at the minute, so they can only use these menu buttons. So it chooses withdraw money. Okay, it prints on the screen how much, and immediately swaps into state number, number the other one, number, number one, which is just the number buttons. That appears there. 
So he's typing in 300, and before he hits enter, he tries to use one of these other buttons, and it's disabled. It doesn't work, because it's in number state at the minute. So swapping backwards and forwards between the two states. Um, if you look at look at the actual the actual ATM, what it might look like. Um, each button and each control on the screen. If I if I just drag anything in at all, for example, I'll put another button in here. Um, uh, there it is, it's paired up on the top. J button one. Um, that button at the moment is visible and it's active. If I run my ATM, that's going to appear, just like everything else. And um, I can immediately click on it. Second. I can click on that J button one. Nothing happens because there's no code behind it. Um, what I want to happen is I want that to, I can I can either decide that that's visible or invisible. So for example, if I if I want that button to disappear, I can just type in here. Um, I can say set or J button one. I think it was called J button one dot set visible. And if I pass in a false, then that will disappear. And likewise, if I say J button and I set it to uh, set its enabled mode to false, then uh, or flash, um, that will be visible. But if I press it, nothing's going to happen. So here, look at as an example, I've set it to the first press. Um, the first press on this button will set it to visible, but enabled but disabled rather. So I'm just going to run that. <clears throat> and what will happen is after the first press, it'll no longer be pressable. There you go. So it'll press that and see it's grayed out. It's now disabled. I can't press it again. Um, alternatively, what I can do is I can say after the first press, because I've put this code behind the button press, I'll set its invisible property to true. So it should disappear effectively. As soon as I click it the first time, there we go. We'll just test that out. Uh, oh, and it has oh, because, yeah, because I've set its visible property to true instead of false. Let me try that again. All right, all right. I'll just stop this in a minute. Run it again. Start me ATM simulator and it will disappear when I click on it. There we go. Okay, so given those two options that we have, um, what I can do at any point in time, if I want to move, I, I can define I can define two modes. So I can I can make a I can make a function called mode one or you know input numbers, and it will disable all of these and it will only have these usable. And I can make another function called you know. Uh, menus where it'll disable all of this stuff here and it'll just have these available <clears throat> so therefore if if a user is kind of if he's if he's halfway through one of these I'll disable anything distracting they could potentially press which would mess up my program and that's 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 basically what we're going to be doing when we talk about the view logic we talk about um, protecting our GUI so that the user can't do silly things and um, the reason that we have to do this is because, remember, GUIs are event-driven. So in other words, an event is the press of a button or, you know, a, some interaction with the GUI. And that controls the flow of the program, whereas the previous programs we've written up until now have been procedural. So it's the program that controls it, not the GUI. So the program is the, is, is the, is the, <clears throat> the thing which dictates when they can input. <clears throat> Excuse me. When when they can input a number, uh, when this finishes, etc. Okay. So event driven. GUI. The user controls whereabouts in the program anything happens. Um, procedural. The program controls it. <clears throat>